This program is in partnership with Open and Clear Broadcasting. Don't miss the call. Join the revolution of the evolving perspective of an awakened consciousness. Are you ready? Join the community at openandclear.com. These religious statues are in place in consideration for the residual, archaic mindset that is evidence of a belief that it is important to define something to constitute its status and validity. While these are only short, basic understandings of the parameters of its practice, in no way is the actual practice confined to its limits. For those who have achieved full divine realization, this information is not new. It is considered ancient wisdom. Before any constitution, before any status of civilization as we know today, before ancient Egypt and all of its knowledge, before the loss of Atlantis and all of its understanding, before the movement of the continent of Mu, before the visit and settlement onto this planet, before any establishment of a story or history, before the earth existed, before the sun burned, before the galaxy spun, before any existence of any time and space, this information has been available and is still available in this very instant. The truth remains to be the truth. And those who are truly willing to find it are unstoppable in their success. We're going to be focusing on something rather important in most people's lives. At least, I mean, who am I to really talk about statistics? But, you know, 90%, 91% of them are made up on the spot. Anyway. <laughs> I am here to make up some other stuff. <laughs> oh, jeez. Let's start this over. Who is this guy? What am I listening to? We're here to talk about the fifth statute of the divinely realized. We believe in relationships. A lot of these, as we get into this, is kind of a, a breaking down of, of what is naturally evident, naturally apparent. That even such as saying a thing as we believe in gravity is something that is there, something that is experienced. I believe in gravity because I can somewhat rely on it. It's, it's kind of the same idea, is that in relationships and every relationship that we deal with throughout our lives, regardless if it's an intimate relationship or some a sort of a just passing by, even even the driving by other cars and dealing with traffic, these are relationships as well, and how you deal with them. Essentially, as we get into the details and core essence of what relationships are, 
is that everything that you deal with is a relationship. So, me dealing with this computer is a specific type of relationship that has somewhat of a s- different types of resistances and beliefs uh, on what I believe it is and how I use it, and and it is definitely a one-sided relationship. I am using it like crazy. Anyway, this cup here, this, we have a special relationship. Mm. Maybe it's not with the cup. <laughs> but what's inside the cup? <laughs> and when you get into really this coming to the realization of what reality is and the experience of unity, unity, that's cut short when we say it's everywhere and it's in everything and in everyone it's a little a little cut short from what it truly means but essentially it is what all derives from and even to say from kind of just cut it short it's almost as if you know the real relationship is simply god is and you can't really even <laughs> Even that essence of ceasing to speak from that, it still, it still comes short. But simply, even the word God is coming short from being able to describe, even as we've talked about, that the essence of what it truly is cannot be named any different than anything else. That it is consisting of all names of all beginnings, of all beings, of all, of all lack of names, nameless things, of all spaces in between, of all variations. And as you may have inter, uh, listened to the introduction of these programs, I talked about how to sum up all of these things, it simply would be, God is all I am. And that uh, has very specific uh, commas in place and semicolon there that uh, God is all. And God is, essentially, is the essence of the truth of it. And then there's all. And that is all that I am. And so God is all that I am. And so it kind of has many different ways of interpreting it and describing it, but it essentially is saying everything is the same one thing. And uh, so it has different dimensions of reading it, even such a simple phrase as God is, semicolon, all, comma, I am, period. <laughs> is that a whole sentence? I don't really know. I don't care about English grammar, as you might have noticed reading these things. So we say the nameless, unnameable, undefinable, infinite, eternal aspect in all variations of everything is. It can't really do anything else because it, everything is consisting in it. Every option is consisting in it. Every variation of option is within it. There is no outside of it, for that would be something else which is also in it. So even if you think you come to an edge, you come to what would be a perspective of a dimension to enter into another perspective of dimensions of the same understanding, of the same relationship, of the same source. So, to put it more practically, (laughs) is everything you're dealing with is essentially God. And there's really only this aspect of God that knows itself as everything, as everyone, as every place, and then this aspect of God that doesn't know itself, <laughs> and we like to also think that you know the acting parts of God acting and reflecting this idea of not knowing also actually don't know, but they're just really acting. Even as I am, and what I am, what I currently believe about myself is reflected in this same essence, the same source of what God is reflecting. So, 
This is one approach, this is one way of describing, as we've been describing throughout these statutes, of, of actually coming to this understanding and recognizing this truth and coming into this truth, if it's even possible. For no matter what, there will always be everything and the perceiver of everything. You, regardless of if, if you think of yourself as a body, regardless if you think of yourself as a soul, as a consciousness, it doesn't matter. Whatever you think of yourself as is still remaining to perceive something else. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what dimension you're in. It doesn't matter what realms. It doesn't matter what universe or alternate universe or anything. That you will still be perceiving something. And even if that is simply only yourself, there is still in the beginning of all existence in which all has derived from is that same one essence of the perceiver and the perceived. This is that core essence of the relationship of all that is. And this is what it's referring to. That as we have gone through this development of what we think of ourselves, the universe has reflected, say God, has reflected what we believe about ourselves or what we have chosen to believe is real. And then through these dimensions, we have developed more and more and what it, you know, purifying pretty much the idea of what we like about these things and how we want it and where it's going to go. Even in this essence of you see billions of bodies out there that are also believing themselves to be world, in a world and talking amongst themselves and not knowing God and, and searching for truth. Surprisingly, doing the exact same thing you do. There is a reason for this, and, and we like to say that, oh, we were all created the same, uh, and, and it makes perfect sense. Essentially, what it is, is that you are believing yourself to be one way, and you look about in the world, and, in this reflection and among all that is, and you see only yourself. For this God, completely impartial in what it's going to represent, being so infinite and vast, you're really just, by the beliefs of your own self, is picking and choosing within the file cabinets of infinity and eternity of what you want to be experiencing right now. And while every variation and every possible option is in that, is among that, you are then simply choosing between what percentage of reality you want to see. So as you're here in this lifetime, as you're here in this body, you are joining in an experience of a percentage of perceiving the purity of this reality, of this relationship. So it's as you've been in this soul experience in the spiritual universe, you are simply in this relationship with God still. As you are in this body world, this physical identity and relationship, you are still in this relationship with God still. So regardless if you see or have uh, read a book that helps you define your relationship as a special relationship and you feel like guilty now being in it, uh, the idea has nothing to do with what is actually occurring in the relationship. It has to do with your perspective. Are you recognizing God there? Are you recognizing truth there? Because if, even if it is your goal, then it is essentially building up and bringing you to this recognition of this truth of this relationship. If, if your goal is other things and other means as material things, even any, anything being a, a relationship, emphasizing your personal relationship with this individual, then uh, in the same sense is your goal is something else. Your goal is with and among the belief of what you have reflected. So you're believing you're a body, you, you see it as in with a body. And the dealings or surviving of a body or family name or anything like that, that you're then speaking or using or being in this relationship for another purpose than the emphasis of the relationship in which it has all derived. So that a holy relationship is the attempt or the ability 
to emphasize this actual relationship of the truth. Now, it might be in its dimensional perspective still looking like a physical relationship, still looking like any <laughs> any description of a relationship we want to talk about or with souls or soul families or even just worlds or <laughs> dimensions or anything. It is all what you are perceiving of all that is. This perceiving and believing of all that is is essentially the relationship of what do you think of yourself and what do you think of God to be? So you're experiencing every day this essence of what you believe. That's the reason, that's the purpose of what this whole reflected experience is about. That it is, the purpose of it is to show you and to e express to you what you are choosing to believe, what you are choosing to experience, what you are choosing to understand. And while it's doing that, it's simply expressing to you a little bit more and showing you what you want. If you want a little more guidance, a little more uh, understanding, it would take you there. It would, you know, it speaks. There's a reason it's, it's the vo considered the voice of God is because it represents the actual essence of what you believe God is. So you're, if you're looking for it, you're going to find it because what you look for is what you are. And it is simply a reflection regardless of what relationship you look into and find yourself, you see and find only yourself. So it really doesn't have anything to do with the actual relationship. It has to do with what you're looking for in the relationship and which defines if it's a holy relationship or a special relationship. And that's referring to uh, maybe, <laughs> off the top of my head, referring to a sexual relationship or a, a, a relationship with a dog or a relationship with a house or a relationship with a computer or rela and whatever they are use it for and what you're in it for. And often we find relationships that we're like, oh, oh, I do not want to have this person in my life. I'm sorry, I do. You are just a negative, disgusting, uh, horrible person, and I don't want you in my life. And, it, you know, it's funny that that too is a special relationship, that it has an emphasis of something other than the truth of God. And if you want any and every relationship, say with a political official or with some sort of object or anything, is your your attempts to see the truth of it is also the attempts to see that it is all one thing, therefore the same. So we get into all these different dimensions of describing it and explaining it, but essentially, if you do have the goal of recognizing truth and love and recognizing what is that essence and what is God, then you, it is a perfect holy relationship. Don't be concerned with, you know, oh, I, I, I shouldn't be in this relationship because I've made it a special thing that's only about sex or about, you know, about this or that or whatever. And if it is, I mean, the activity, regardless the activity, does not make it a special relationship. It is why you're doing that activity. You will always be doing something. Say, for an example, let's say you're going to uh, <laughs> the top of the mountain to live at the, this ashram because you want to find enlightenment. Well, it does involve climbing that mountain to that ashram. And even though when you get to that ashram, you might not have uh, to deal with climbing trees or cliffs or, or all these many steps or anything. <laughs> what, what else would you do? Um, dealing with the people on the way or something. It's when you get there, it, you think you're actually there. But the entire time of climbing up the mountain was the whole point. It, it was the whole journey. It was the experience of understanding it and coming into the comprehension, the actual comprehension of what it truly had to offer. 
we like to think, oh, it was it was start in like as a race. You get into a race. Yeah, the race starts when the gun is shot off, and and then now you're running and you're racing, and then it ends when you reach the finish line and so on, or whoever does. Unfortunately, the race began many, many, many years before that. When not only did you learn how to walk,、uh, you also started to learn how to run. And in fact, before this, you grew legs,、um, <laughs> and, and and you got the ability to even potentially walk and potentially run and potentially race. And you had, you know, whatever conditions and circumstances. Maybe you're racing because you want to just beat that guy. You just hate that guy so much. Maybe you have this revengeful situation. So if you can see that this entire thing is required, even for this race to begin, like we can just start the story at a certain point. Oh, here's the story of this race. There's this guy, this guy, and this guy. Well, if you have no idea of background of human beings, for an example, it's like, well, what is a race? Okay, now you need to explain what a race is. Okay, well, what do you mean run? What is running? Well, okay, then you have to explain, you know, walking really fast. <laughs> what do you mean walking? What is walking? See, if you don't have this background already, you have to have all this explanation of all of it, and essentially. With this discussion, as we're going back to the beginning of all existence, beginning of all time, and that it's a reflection of that relationship, then to have the race, as this metaphorically speaking,、um, you have to have the entirety of billions of years of evolution and example of or, or creation of seven days, regardless, to come into the position in which you have a race. And you start the story, and you shoot off the gun. What? Wait, what is a gun? What do you mean, gun? What do you mean, shoot? What? Is, what is going on? <laughs> so, as your relationship is there, running with and, and <laughs> racing other individuals and other people, the entirety of the structure of the whole universe that supports this race happening, and knowing what on earth this race is. Is the essence of all that is. It is the essence of God. Okay, so the attempts to have an experience, say the perspective of this individual self, this personality self. I'm, I'm saying the wrong words. This、uh, <laughs> this self of God. There we go. And its belief has the entirety of all the universe to support it. And it's required that it has all the entirety of the universe to support it. So, in this way, you can understand that we're in somewhat of a transitional phase, phase of life, in what the Son of God has actually chosen for the purpose of having separate selves. But it is required along that gestation and creation、uh, of this what the Son of God chose to experience in the first place. The development of it. Yeah, I mean, of course, it can be made in seconds and everything. But then, it, would it know what feet are? Would it know what running is? No, it has to learn every last little step. So, when we are learning it for ourselves, I mean, we learned how to walk, we learned how to run, we learned how to talk, and all this. Is this is the the knowing? This is the Son of God learning and knowing of it itself exactly all the details it needs to support what it has chosen for the universe to exist for, and you know, what it wanted to be in the first place. So even as the question that begat the entirety of all existence, as the perceiver of all that is looked on the infinite variations of all that is and saw. Pretty much, essentially, nothing being so expansive and so intensely focused, even as that Big Bang is an singul singularity. Is that the question? You know, what is what is this? <laughs> you know, you don't even have those words. I mean, you don't. Even, what am I? <laughs> All these questions and what is God?、Uh, where where am I? What is this? What am I looking at? How how am I looking? It, it all is the beginning of having thought, having a movement of this energy, and started this existence of representing something. But all these questions require everything about it. 
being an example of all possible options, all variations of all existence, of an, an example of what God would be if, essentially if, if it was anything. Because in that infinite variation of being so eternal, being so vast and expansive, which I talk a lot about in the first statute, uh, has no real definition. It exceeds definition, which means it has all of them in it and gets so defined that it is no longer definable. You're a part of this, okay? And as you're going through your experience in life, you are finding out the answer to your question. And I, I'm sorry to say it's not only this life and it's not only your millions, if not billions of lives on the physical plane. It's, it's also billions of lives in the etheric plane and billions of lives in the spiritual universe and all this stuff. So it's, it's in this understanding that as you're going through, you're essentially on this journey of knowing yourself of recognizing yourself as in what am I that is one with all that is so these dimensions are the experience of what the son of God believes about itself currently as the physical universe a lot and of course the miracles is the attempts to bring into the awareness of consciousness and recognizing that your awareness of consciousness and the true perception naturally uh, exceeds the threshold of what the physical world is there to offer and goes into the additional experience of the spiritual universe of the fifth dimension and having that experience and doing the same thing essentially the training of the mind that is still the son of god that will eventually believe in more and more and more than the physical or as the third and the phys uh, spiritual as the fifth and moving into the the, the physical as the sixth and so on it's like when it, it's threshold of belief and understanding of what it is experiencing we move on naturally to the next but it is always all these dimensions are simply the representation of what I currently believe is me and God and so that's what a relationship is, regardless if I think it's a bunch of physical things and physical people, about physical understandings and physical ideas. And I look about the universe and see physical stars and physical or the lack of physicalness and outer space and the void thereof. And I've de defined it all as this physical presence. Therefore, I am focused on the physical essence of the third dimension. Even though with the eyes focused on any of the variations of the spiritual universe, do not see it as physical. They recognize an experience of this entire movement and emanation of energy. And the experience of it is more of a unification and a joining of this network of this energy. That even as uh, when you mention energy to people that are so in focus on physical separation, they even think of energy as separate atoms with separate particles, <laughs> as, in, as if they're like separate little universes or spinning around separate little solar systems. The way in which you describe it is going to be true. You're going to experience it and find the factual evidence. And no matter how many studies you put it through or anything, you're going to be finding what you're looking for. That's the whole point of it. That from the beginning of all existence, as this son of God perceived anything it wanted to, it looked and therefore it saw what it looked at and saw was up to what it was looking for. It looked for an existence. It looked at light, for an example, as many would describe this first beginning of all existence. It looked at this essence of light, knowing it as light. And in that understanding and describing it and, and just analyzing it and looking at it, it was beginning to, I mean, being this 
really truly an infant god of coming from absolutely knowing nothing and starting to develop and make itself make its ideas of what it believed about itself by first this experience of being so vast and everything it's it started to describe it as an emanation as light so it was really just looking at the variations of all that is that is not separate from anything and just started to see what it wanted to see as looking at uh, you know for, for say thousands or billions of years you know oh this this is so beautiful oh this is wonderful this is nice you know just enjoying the, you know <laughs> enjoying it and then seeing rays of of light coming off of it you know it started looking for a little bit more description of it a little bit more understanding and so it then saw it you know it looked and it found because that's what it's about it's representing all of it whatever you're looking for whatever you're expecting so i mean if you want to take this into a practical form it is in that idea of a natural expectation you might be trying to go against your expectations and you might be you know i want uh, this <laughs> this big house or this money situation to work out or whatever and yet you're trained to expect things to not work out you're trained to expect relationships to fall apart you're trained to and and you're just like oh this is this is what happens you know what is it that you think of when you say oh, this is just what happens with life this is life man this is it it's it kind of brings out and emphasizes your belief currently that is what will be evolving because belief is always in consciousness and this is to kind of emphasize the difference of the dimensions of being consciousness and the examples of the spiritual universe uh, representing in this holographic form what this consciousness believes and understands so it's always say reflecting is like the best word to describe it the and it's all a derivative of what that consciousness knows and thinks and believes of itself. It cannot exceed that. So let's get into actually reading this and breaking it down and talking about it. So it's abridged for layman understanding not for quotation of what this actually is for it comes short as to say we believe in relationships uh, many people would <laughs> that can be taken in so many different ways and that's absolutely okay we understand the reality of all say love in relationships is a direct derivative of this initial relationship which is the only function of the holographic holy spiritual universe whom's only shape and form exist by its solely purpose to represent a particular chosen definition of the perceiver and the endless possibilities of the perceived every relationship is a reflection of solely this relationship within the original creation of the universe we acknowledge the benefits of recognizing this truth in every moment reuniting all within this single purpose within each dimensional perspective of experiencing all the possibilities of what could represent it while the perceiver chooses to acknowledge beyond these illusions of its images and appearances to expand with the recognition of its glory one with god the benefit of every form of relationship which one is not able to recognize being a derivative of this original source 
is to emphasize all the beliefs and ideas which are in direct opposition to and in resistance to the awareness thereof, offering the benefit to release, forgive, them and eventually become aware of this original source relationship. By doing so, willingly taking them on wholeheartedly knowing this goal. Sorry, recently just added that little bit at the end there, but it then get into the description of why and what a relationship is for and how we like to we like to think that pretty much relationships are for all sorts of things. We we think uh, you know, I don't want to be alone is a, is an idea for a relationship that makes sense, you know, I I enjoy the company. Oh well, he's my best friend or whatever. And all of these ideas are still regardless of what you think of it is still a derivative of that same one source, that same one relationship of the perceiver that truly was alone and the perceived, which truly was alone as well. It really, in its own sense, its own essence, was all one thing. And the thing about one thing is that there is no other. So as you get into this unity idea, there's simply this division of its own self to to be in relationship with its own self so this example of dividing up the perceiver and the perceived is essentially dividing up itself from itself saying i'll be everything that is and you be us perceiving and experiencing everything i and we are so this idea of the son of god is better described as the self of god that quite literally without the self of God, I mean, as far as it having everything in it, it is not in experience nor comprehended of its own self because it exceeds every definition, having it everywhere, every idea, every, the only way to really comprehend the stories written in a book is to divide up every letter and every word and every sentence so that it it's not just smashed together in one blob of letters you know to say that's even letters in the position is smashing every book of every word every letter into the size of a pinpoint is not readable so it has no real experience so the perceiver of that experience divides it up and reads each line, each word, each letter on its own, experiencing it firsthand for itself and going through this experience of knowing only itself, recognizing only itself, reading only itself, revealing only itself, fearing only itself, and trusting only itself. <laughs> and it's endless, endless, endless So to say relationships, it does simply describe that, yes, it is here. It is an, an essence of all reality. It is, there is nothing else without this relationship. There is no experience or canvas of all relationship. There is no understanding of it without this relationship. So it's required for this, all that is, to have any experience of itself at all, to divide itself up to know there's the son of God experiencing myself and I'm the son of God experiencing all of it so we can say it over and over again hopefully describe it in many different ways but essentially every relationship you're in as in dealing with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or or your friends with benefits or your dog or or anything Oh, that was creepy. <laughs> it's all a derivative of that same... Let's say it again. And a derivative is a mathematical term for something that has extended from, uh, even as the idea of zero really doesn't exist, but that, say, every number is a magnification of, say, one. And this is the idea of that. That when it is all based off of it 
And without the one, you know, everything will fall apart. Nothing else will exist. So even though we have illusionary ideas of what reality is and we have truth ideas of what reality is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the essential relationship of it. So if you you might be on this spiritual journey hoping to really recognize and understand what namaste means, but it essentially is that regardless if I look with my body eyes or if I look with my soul eye or anything, if I look at all, I recognize and want to recognize that true essence of it only being the one same es essence of reality. If I think it's separate, if I think, you know, really your name is describing you as a person that is separate from this computer, I mean, it seems obvious, but I am then focused on a specific dimension in this case, the physical reality and the conscious obsession of it, the fourth reality, and, and the definition thereof of these two different and, and billions of different objects and different people. But it is still the same one source. So as it is going to be coming and we're, we're coming into this evolution of recognizing again what really truly namaste means, then we are coming into the belief of it. And it, the world starts to reflect it. The universe of what God is being completely impartial to caring, really, about what you believe about itself. It just simply reflects it, simply gives it, simply naturally shows it because it loves you. <laughs> because what you are is, is in itself, this relationship is what love is. And that's where, you know, to give is to receive is, is all about is that you are simply doing this unto yourself. And so as you, you give, you're giving back to the same reflection in which gives to you. And you're, so it's, it's continuous. And to know that as much as I want to say, you know, I am God, I would say God is me and one with me. I am I'm one with this idea of God and this comprehension of God. But essentially the all that is has no essence to even speak I mean it is all words and all mouths and all souls and all thoughts and all experiences of all of it and it is through my decision of which aspect to perceive in which I will then experience it as such even as this voice of God is really referring to the spiritual universe but if I'm looking for a voice, I'll hear voice. If I'm looking for an image or a sign or a symbol, I'll see signs and symbols. If I'm looking for <laughs> death and corruption, I will see death and corruption. You know, what am I prepared to believe in? And the evolution of where we are as in the world and say the disappearance of the world or the journey to it is according to how much I believe that that's actually happening, how much I believe that it's actually true. Essentially, I am responsible, and this is reference to you as much as you want to take it, I am responsible for everything I see. That even this idea of God being completely impartial, just going to represent everything you believe, does not care if it's a positive thing, a negative thing. For Frankly, it's all an illusion. Even you are an illusion to its true essence. But what you are gives it meaning. Like you are the purpose of why this is all happening. Regardless if it's the world happening or the spiritual world happening or any <laughs> variation thereof, the purpose of it all is simply to love you, simply to give to you what you are wanting. And essentially, how can you know what everything once well you think about what it believes currently and you just represent what it believes and what it knows and understands itself and this is how the relationship goes on that god will be there loving you through that dog god will be there loving you through that computer god will be there loving you through that partner of yours God would be there loving you through that child. 
God would be there loving you regardless of what you think it to be for the love that you share is the essence of your reality somebody write that down oh it's beautiful like tearing up over here When I began to have direct communications with God in this life, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say anymore. Okay. When I became aware of my direct communications with God in this life, one of the first phrases that were said to me verbally as I was looking for audible words and communications of complete understanding it represented this as my mind was chattering and being wild and crazy it represented this stillness and settle of everything not just my thoughts but everything in the room and all existence just stopped at least in my awareness <laughs> and it said be not afraid my son for I am with thee and I will always be with thee until thee are with me. It was much more profound than that. It was like a booming voice that just absolutely changed my life. Be not afraid, my son, for I am with thee, and I will always be with thee until thee are with me. If you really analyze that and you notice that it's all about perception. Say, I was, I was 12 years old just discovering masturbation and being feeling guilty for it and, and all this stuff, going, praying for hours because I didn't want to be a sinner and I didn't want to go to outer darkness. And <laughs> so it brought me closer and to this experience and brought this experience. It, essentially was saying no matter what you're doing don't be afraid don't be afraid that's not the point of this There's none of this in any of your lives or experiences is the point of it to be afraid no for I am with you I am here with you even closer than you can comprehend and while you're going through this experience of separation and bodies Regardless, <laughs> I am still with you. Why go in all these variations and dimensions and no, still with you, always will be with you. Until, <laughs> it's like, oh crap, until what? Until I masturbate again? Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, until you realize that you're with me. So nothing changed. Nothing changed except for this perception of recognizing when well, God's like, I'm with you, man. The only thing that would change is this little self saying, oh, where's God? Where's God? Where's God? To then say, oh, I'm with you, God. I'm with you. We understand the reality of all relationships are direct derivatives of this initial relationship, which is the one, which is the only function of the holographic universe, whose only shape exists by its sole purpose to represent a particular chosen definition of the perceiver and the endless possibilities of this perceived every relationship is a reflection of solely this relationship within the original creation of the universe 
We acknowledge the benefits of recognizing this truth reunites all within this single purpose within each dimensional perspective of experiencing all the possibilities of what could represent it while the perceiver chooses to acknowledge beyond these illusions of its images and appearances to expand within the recognition of its glory the benefits of every relationship or every form of relationships which one is not able to recognize a derivative it being a derivative of this original source is to emphasize all the beliefs and ideas which are in direct opposition and in resistance to the awareness thereof offering the benefit to release them and eventually become aware of this original source by doing so willingly taking them on wholeheartedly knowing only this goal Wow. <laughs> as much as we are seeming to intellectualize this and talk about this and and you're trying to understand it and and doing so and however it works. <laughs> it's, it's truly within your consciousness to make that decision. As heaven is a decision I must make is referring to this kingdom of heaven in which the only relationship that is experienced is the perceiver and the perceived without definition solely representing only god and myself god and me god and i <laughs> god and me god myself god and i <laughs> however i want to describe myself it's god and the description of me God in the reflection of me, God in the experience of me, God in the misunderstanding of me. <laughs> God and the I am. God and the I am. It's always God and the I am. If you have this goal of maybe coming into the authority of that I am, you are required to recognize this relationship. For there is no real authority in any separation, say other people or other experiences. It's not even about moving a mountain when it's simply the focus of God and I am. God and I am. when i had my experience of several different experiences but this very true intense can't find the words to describe it experience i was impromptu to chant all the white light all up all down all here all there all good all bad all right all wrong all the white light all the white light all the white light while emphasizing that there is no separation between anything in my visualization and my understanding while doing other things while being in the world I'm really not doing anything else but this the white light all the white light all the white light all up all down all here all there all good all bad all right all wrong all the right light all the white 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 light all here all there all good all bad all right all wrong all the white light all the white light all the white light 
All here, all there, all good, all bad, all right, all wrong, all up, all down, all the white light. All the white light. Joining you to this experience of what that true essence is. Regardless if it is white light or not or darkness or some consciousness or anything. It has nothing to do with the words, my friends. It has to do with bringing it all to the singularity, bringing it all home onto that essence of what it is, regardless if my images define it, recognize it. All the white light. Truly bringing you into the experience naturally. Bringing yourself home, bringing yourself into the singularity. All the white light, all the white light, all the white light. All here, all there, all good, all bad, all right, all wrong, all up, all down. All the white light, all the white light, all the white light. I do have a version of that that has all variations of oppositions in which I could think of having to do with spirituality, having to do with physicality, having to do with consciousness and definitions and canceling out all opposition ideas saying, oh, it's all good, it's all bad well then it's nothing it's all right, it's all wrong oh, then it's nothing it's all here, it's all there, okay, then it's all right center (laughs) it's all up, it's all down okay, it's just level (laughs) canceling it all out and it's just all the white light all the white light all the white light So to close, thank you, my friends. Thank you, God. Thank you for being here. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to share that phrase one more time. Quote, whatever it is. Be not afraid, my son, for I am with thee, and I will always be with thee. And tell thee are with me. Have a beautiful day. It's undefinable. It's expansive. It's the truth. For more information and all your questions to be answered, please visit openandclear.com. Close.
click the big questions button and to read these statutes click more details Slash you know I'm good. Strish that seed near us. And up in the shower.